Howdy folks, and welcome to the Iron Horse. In this episode, we are once again going to visit the Pacific Southwest Railway Museum in Campo, California. The last episode I did on this place was the Halloween setup. This one focuses on the rest of my visit at the museum. The museum sits along an old rail line known as the San Diego and Arizona Eastern, which used to connect San Diego to El Centro eastward. There is a lot of rich history on this railroad, but it would be too much to cover in this one episode as this is solely focused on the museum. In this episode, we will take a speeder ride, a locomotive cab ride, as well as go behind the scenes with some really, really neat equipment. Campo, California is a small desert town located east of San Diego about 40 miles and right on the Mexican border as shown in this picture at the top of the hill. Although this is my first time at the museum, it does hold a part in my childhood through There Goes a Train, starring Dave Hood, who pretended to be the engineer for the day. Hi kids, I'm Engineer Dave. Well, you know, I'm not a real engineer, but the real engineers have let me pretend for the day so that you and I can learn all about trains and what they do and how they work. Now obviously this is not a locomotive, this is what's called a speeder. Speeders are used out on the track for doing maintenance work and moving the crews around. So what do you say? You and I go for a ride. Let her go, Jack. Back in the present day, I start this rail journey like many others at Fullerton train station where I take the Amtrak Surfliner to San Diego where I meet up with my friend who then takes me out to the museum. Famous along this train route are the spectacular views of the Pacific Ocean herself. I have made it to San Diego and I'm now ready to head into the San Diego wilderness of Campo. On our way to the museum we stopped at the La Mesa Depot which is owned by the museum but closer to San Diego. It contains an old depot and a steam engine as well as a couple of railroad cars including a boxcar and a caboose. However, I'm only going to show you the steam engine and a passing light rail train that uses the old right of way because the focus in this episode is on the museum in Campo itself. The light rail seen here is part of San Diego Trolley's Orange Line. We have made it to the Pacific Southwest Railway Museum. Let's start off by watching the speeder go by and then watching the excursion train pull in before going on a speeder ride. Bring me dinner. All right. 
I went and picked up my wife at work and came back. She still wasn't home. So you said he had two. This car? This car? This car? Here. So in the distance here guys, we, if you can see that fence on top of the hill there, we got the Mexico border right here. That's how close we are to Mexico. That motor sound you hear in the background is the speeder I was just riding. Check this out. They actually have something underneath this speeder to turn it around for the trip back. How cool is that? So is this how they turn speeders around usually? Back in the day? Now for the return trip.
All right, let's watch this action again as they spin the speeder back around. That first part is very uplifting. It's, and no, you don't have to be a superhero to spin this speeder. <laughs> Now it's time to take a ride on this GP9. I even got to blow the horn. Now, two, twice. Twice. Okay. Heck yeah. What can you tell me about this diesel locomotive that we are riding in? Well, this is an ex Belt GP9. And uh, it was painted uh, Black Widow, Southern Pacific, uh, 3873 now. SRM here in Campo. Uh, an excellent running locomotive. Uh, it's, uh, you can't beat these old GP9s. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, I used to work with these. Uh, sometimes we'd have 10 of these in a, a consist uh, on the Southern Pacific, and uh, they always rode excellent. And uh, with the good working engines, they, uh, Southern Pacific got their money out of them. I have a friend who lives in Oregon. He's a huge fan of these uh, Black Widow colored switchers like the GP9s and the SD9s. He's probably going to be jealous when he found out I got to ride in one. <laughs> yes, uh, they're getting hard to find, so uh, yeah. uh, he made a great uh, Sadly, decision um, coming here. Sadly, an SD9 that was in uh, Black Widow paint was recently destined for the scrapper in Oklahoma, unfortunately. He used to work on the Portland and Western, I believe. Right. That's a shame. Yeah, it is. That engine should have been saved. It has. A lot of politics involved in that. So this young man here is a volunteer at Paris. Oh, really? He's a docent there. Oh, okay. Career, next car, one zero one. We can get an agreement, you know, and let the engine go, and he'll do it. Because he just had this big project. He just finished the engine house in Fort Bragg. So to do something. It gets done. Yeah. Yeah, I see a posting on Facebook about progress. Is this a Metra car you guys got here? Yeah, it's a uh, <laughs> long story on that one. Oh, you got a little, uh, tank engine there and a 280 consolidation and here we got coaster 2103 coming up So back to more family friendly content. We're going to turn to the right. Hold up in the shade right there so I can catch up with you. So this is one of the locomotives that was featured in There Goes a Train. Right here. Yep, this is the Malay. It was featured and there goes a train. Let's have a flashback, shall we? Now I know you know what this is. This is a great big, huge old 
old steam locomotive. Now this one doesn't look very pretty. It's kind of rusty because it's getting ready for rest. Are you sure about that, Dave? Here we are, 30 years later. It still doesn't look like it's been restored. But at least it's preserved. Due to high wind distortion, I had to voice over this one, but what I was saying is here we have the museum's newest piece of equipment, Coaster 2103, one of the former F-40s that ran along the coast between San Diego and Oceanside, hauling the coaster trains for nearly 25 years before being retired. Another coaster unit is going to be preserved at the Southern California Railway Museum, known as 2105. It's always good to see these things get preserved because even though they're more recent, they still are a part of railroad history now. I am about to go inside this old Chicago Metro car. So while not quite as scary as the haunted train I literally walked through not a half hour ago, this is still quite the sight because this is my first time ever Writing, I mean, not writing, <laughs> being in a gallery commuter rail car. Now, for those of you familiar with like Chicago's Metro or San Francisco's Caltrain, they to this day still use gallery cars. And as you can see, there's no hallway at the upper level, it is like a balcony, like one big long balcony up there. And as you can see, these cars are so old. There are no outlets, not even the old plug-in type outlets, let alone the USB stuff that you would see on trains today, like the Arrow, or the Sprinter, or the refurbished Metrolink cars. This is antique commuter here. Let's, let's go upstairs. So this one looks well preserved compared to the ones in the Carrizo Gorge. Windows are definitely faded. And I'm guessing this is where people would keep their luggage. Briefcases. Briefcases up here. Nice. So this is what commuter rail was like in what, the 80s, correct? Oh, no, 60s. 60s, okay, there we go. Oh, this is what commuter rail was like in the 60s. No modern amenities, no outlets whatsoever. Just seats that you sit back and watch. Well, what used to be a view, now it's just a very, very, very blur, or faded window, but this is what commuter rail travel was like back in the day. It's amazing. Oh, and check this out. This ain't just no normal gallery car. This is a cab car. This is where the engineers, right in here, would be controlling the train when it was going backwards. The locomotive would be pushing the train. And this technique is still in use today on many commuter railroads and some regional Amtrak routes. This is the cab car in here. Yep. Definitely some cool stuff. What's the number of this unit? 2104, yes. This is the locomotive that, strangely enough, is a trivial thing in my childhood because of There Goes a Train. Back in the present, this GP9 is the one running the show. However, there are plans to restore 2104 given the funds and the resources.
walking down the tracks here. You can just hear that desert wind. So you mean to tell me that, that that panel on the side of this train car right there, I'm zooming in on it right now, that is the very first barcode? That is correct. Wow. In existence, you mean? Like of all bar things barcode? Those are the first ones in the circle. Come here. Wow. Here we got 114 again. So here's one right here. And another barcode on this and Santa Fe. So that Fe. was called CarTech. Hmm. I'll send you the information on it. All right. But I like to think of the railroad industry as the petri dish of our civilization. And everything that we have technical has grown out of the railroad industry. Railroads are the first organization spread out of a large area. Mm -hmm. So communication was very important. Yep. So the railroads had their own telegraph and then their own telephone companies. Oh, I'm always fascinated with seeing the old telegraph wires along the railroad tracks. Right. You've heard of a company called Sprint? Sprint? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I know about Sprint. So, so what does Sprint stand for? Okay, so YouTube uh, Iron Horse fans, get ready for this. Sprint stands for Southern, Southern Pacific, Pacific Railroad Internal, Intelligence Internal, Internal te and Telecommunications, correct? I believe it was telephone, but it could be telecommunications. Yeah, yes. I actually knew that fact. So think about this. They had their own phone lines from Portland, Oregon to New Orleans, mm -hmm. and then over to Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. So when the phone company started deregulating, they were leasing out their excess capacity. Mm -hmm. Then they kind of went into the phone company or phone business, and then they sold. <laughs> yep. Then this, yeah, the Sprint thing, that is definitely a fact I'm also going to mention when I do my planned Southern Pacific episode. Sure. So, uh, so I just learned that the hinges on the back of this car are there for a good reason, and that was because the entire back of this car actually opened. It legit opened. And that was so that they could carry theater scenery. Theatery troops would go from town to town and they'd take their scenery with them. Nice. And so this was able to handle those long pieces of scenery. So, yeah, like a theater troop train. And when this car wasn't being used for scenery, mm -hmm. there were structures inside that would become stalls for horses. Oh, wow. So this is a horse car. So this is what would carry racehorses between races around the country or take them out to Kentucky Downs, this type of stuff. So this car probably went to Delmar many times with racehorses. Nice. So I've just been told here that this car is electrically powered. Was. Was electrically powered. <laughs> see the gear? Yeah, I see. That's the ring gear. Mm-hmm. So yeah, back there is the flexible joint because this is an articulated locomotive. Yeah. All right, so this is the high pressure cylinder. Mm-hmm. And then if you turn and look at the other cylinder, that's the low pressure. So this has a bigger diameter and they are able to do the same amount of work even though the steam is at the lower pressure. Mm -hmm. It's called compounding. And what are these mechanical parts called right here? <laughs> yep. Okay. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have here, folks. If you want to check out more of the museum's historical equipment, as I couldn't cover it all, go and check out the Pacific Southwest Railway Museum's website, PacificSouthwestRailwayMuseum.org. I'm Iron Horse Fan, and I will see you down the line. Thanks for watching.